Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers, my sisters, those of you who have just commenced the month of Ramadan, I wish you and pray for you that you have the best month of reflection, introspection, connection with Allah through the Quran and through acts of worship. And I pray that you can work on your bad habits, qualities, the bad qualities of the heart, the jealousy, the envy, the hatred, the malice. I pray that you can eradicate all of that during this month or at least work on it. I pray that you can achieve a beautiful connection with the goodness, with the charities, the compassion and all that which Ramadan holds. So I pray that you have the best Ramadan ever. Those of us who have not yet sighted the moon, we will be per perhaps uh, having uh, having uh, Ramadan, we're actually waiting for confirmation in Southern Africa. I'm in Johannesburg right now, and we go according to the uh, see the, the sighting of the moon. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi." You fast uh, depending on the sighting of the moon, and you break your fast, which means you have your Eid also depending on the sighting of the moon. So that moon is not sighted in our part of the world yet. We're just waiting for confirmation. It's just past Salatul Maghrib here and the, the, the moon sighting is uh, happening right now. I want to explain why everyone always argues about when Ramadan and Eid should happen. Now, it's very, very important for us to know this. I've said it in the past, but I'm trying to simplify it for the general masses. So let me explain. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it was very simple. They used to see the moon with a naked eye. And when, if they saw it, they fasted. If they didn't see it, they did not fast. They co completed 30 days of Sha'ban. And if they actually uh, uh, saw the moon for Eid, they would stop the fast and have the Eid. If they didn't see it, they would have 30 days of Ramadan. Now, if you look at that, it was simplified at the time. Later on, there came a few differences of opinion among scholars because of a few reasons. When telescopic sights happened to be invented and people were using visual aids to look, some of the scholars did not allow it. They said you need to use the naked eye like the original teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So they said you have to use the naked eye. To look at the moon. If you don't see it with your naked eye, then it is not the beginning of Ramadan, nor would it be the Eid. But there are other scholars who have said, no, you're allowed to use any aid, even if it is the strongest telescopes, no matter what it is, you are allowed to, to use that. Now, this difference of opinion is very minor in the way it is worded, but the implications are definitely huge because a lot of the times the moon is there, but it is not visible to the naked eye. It is only visible with visual aids. And I'm speaking about telescopic sites, you know, uh, telescopes and different types of uh, uh, visual uh, uh, aids. Now, if you are a person who believes from a jurisprudence perspective, that is called a fiqh perspective, you believe that you're, you should only use the naked eye. Obviously, you're not going to see the moon as quickly as the one who uses a telescope will see it. In Saudi Arabia, they follow the Hanbali school of thought and they use telescopic vision. So mostly Saudi Arabia sees the moon before a lot of other places because the type of sophisticated telescopes they use, you will see the moon. You, It is there. They're not telling you a lie. They saw it. It was there because do you know why? They used telescopic vision. So when the masters of uh, moon sighting and so on, when they tell you that it is impossible to sight the moon. How did Saudi Arabia sight the moon? They are probably not thinking of the fact that those people there are using telescopic vision. And you are talking about impossibility with the naked eye. But I want to tell you something. We shouldn't use the word impossibility. Once the 29th comes in, the hadith says you should look for the moon. I've seen people who are very, very scientific who say we don't want to look for the moon because there is no chance it's going to be there. For you guys, I'm going to tell you you're making a mistake because if the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look for it, look for it even if your 
education teaches you not to look for it. So listen to this. You're a Muslim. The, if the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, look for the moon on the 29th, forget about what you've learned for a moment. Go and look for the moon. And yes, you will be aided by your education. I agree. We take science in as a guiding factor, but not as a final deciding factor. If, imagine... And it has happened where people have said it's impossible to sight the moon and we have sighted the moon. We have sighted the moon at 12 hours at one stage and we saw it. Many of us saw the moon. So I always have this issue to say Allah is able and capable to show you a moon. Just like when doctors say only two days to live and people live for 20 years thereafter. Just like when people say this is what will happen and it doesn't happen. The same thing. Don't lose your iman. I'm not saying discount your knowledge. Don't discount it. Set it aside for a moment when it comes to searching for the moon. By searching for it, even if at the bottom of your, uh, at the bottom of your heart you think that it probably won't be there. By going out to search for it and looking for it, you're definitely going to earn a reward, a very big reward, because you looked for the moon. So go out to look for it. It is an ibadah. It is a moment of acceptance of dua. It is a blessed time. Go out and look for the moon on the 29th, even if your scientific evidence is saying impossible. No problem. I'm going to look because my message Messenger, my Prophet told me, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to go out and look for the moon. Now, we have another issue. There is one school of thought that says that the first people on earth to sight the moon, those are the ones whom the rest of the world should follow. So whoever sees the moon first, the rest of the world should follow. That is not a consensus in that opinion. There is no unanimity in that opinion people are not all agreed upon that opinion to say that if the east sees the moon the west should fast or should have eid and vice versa but it is a valid opinion of jurisprudence there is another opinion that says every region and every horizon the word used is a matla matla meaning the horizon every time the horizon differs then the, the the moon sighting of that region should be singular on its own if i see the moon in southern africa it's for southern africa you see the moon in northern africa it's for northern africa the middle east the middle east southeast asia is for them americas is for them that is also an opinion so let's get this right two opinions regarding seeing the moon one says naked eye one says you're allowed to use telescopic vision so that's why you get two opinions they, you neither one can say the other one is totally unacceptable they might say that's not our opinion but it is a valid opinion among the jurists of note and the scholars who are knowledgeable the second dis problem that i mentioned is those who say from a jurist juristic perspective those who say that the whole world should have Eid or Ramadan together, if one sees the moon, it's uh, necessary for the whole world to take that. Uh, that's one opinion. There is another opinion that says the horizons should actually have their own uh, sighting. Saudi Arabia follows the second opinion, which means as much as they use telescopic vision, they believe Nobody must follow our moon. That is the Saudi standpoint. That is the Hanbali school of thought. Nobody should follow our sighting. All those who are following that sighting are doing so because they believe that they want to follow what the world is probably following or what Saudi Arabia is following. So Saudi Arabia and the ulama there will tell you, the senior scholars will tell you, we believe you should look for your moon for in your own area. Don't rely on us. For that region, there is no, uh, sorry, for that reason, there is no uh, official liaison with the moon uh, sighting committees of the globe and Saudi Arabia because they are not obliged to actually uh, connive or to uh, cooperate with people who they themselves don't believe that those people should be following this opinion. I hope you understand this. So we have that crisis. And now you have uh, countries like ours in Southern Africa, Zimbabwe, South Africa. We don't have a problem seeing the moon. We see it ourselves in our backyards. You just got to look up and you see the, the new crescent. It's quite simple. It's not as difficult as other countries in Europe and the Northern Hemisphere where it's difficult. It is actually a simple procedure. 
And we've seen the moon nearly every month. We keep a record of it, actually. So subhanallah, it's amazing. Now, we're not trying to call upon people to give up their opinions. There are people who will follow the regional sighting. They are correct. There are people who will follow Saudi Arabia for some reason. They have a, 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 their own juristic explanation, which we cannot say is is absolutely unacceptable. It is acceptable from a juristic perspective as an opinion, even though it may not be mine. And then you have people who say, no, if the East sees the moon, the West will actually have to fast. We have a, we have a difficulty in implementing that because Saudi Arabia itself will not accept a moon that is sighted prior to theirs by anyone else across the globe. So there have been times when other countries have seen the moon before Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia has not taken that moon. They haven't accepted it and so on. Especially in the 70s, this used to happen a lot. Recently, because of telescopic vision, it seems that Saudi Arabia sees it before everyone else. And like I explained, why? So this is why we have a difference of opinion and we will never, ever, ever be able to bring the ummah onto one view because as time is passing, we're getting three out of two views and out of three views, we're getting six views and out of six views, we're getting 10 opinions. It's not getting less, it's getting worse. So what I suggest and what I've always said is these opinions are, they, they are legal Islamic jurisprudence, you know, part of the jurisprudence. They are juristic opinions. Nobody can claim that they're the only ones who are right. That's one thing. Secondly is unity is not in uniformity. We can't say, oh, the ummah is not united. Look, we're not even having Eid together. Unity is not about having Eid together. I know of families who have Eid together, but they are the most disunited. I know of communities and nations that have Eid together, but they are so disunited. So the yardstick of unity is never the sighting of the moon, nor is it having Eid together. But the yardstick is to be able to allow people to follow the opinion they believe is correct without insulting them and without hating on them. This is the reason why many years ago when I was asked about the moon sighting, I said, you can have Eid today, you can have Eid the next day, you can have Eid whenever, but don't fight about the moon. The reason why I said this, not because I don't know what I'm talking about, because I know what I'm talking about. From a juristic perspective, you either follow the matla or you don't follow the matla. That is the horizon. You either look at it with telescopic vision or with the naked eye. That is something else. You either, you mean you follow the east or the west and so on. Some people believe that uh, the bearing of witness regarding the sighting of the moon needs to be done in a specific way. It, it's okay. It's from a juristic perspective. If they don't want to accept the sighting of another region or another witness because of some problem they find in the witness, they are free not to accept that particular sighting. So why do we get angry? In the Ummah, we have a major problem right now because everyone is trying to shove down the throats of the others opinions that are their own and they don't realize that the other opinions do hold some value even though you may not agree with that opinion. This is why moon wars exist. I want to conclude by congratulating everyone who started Ramadan tonight by letting you know I love you. Those like myself who are going to be starting perhaps tomorrow because we haven't had confirmation of the moon sighting. I want to congratulate you too. And I love you too. Subhanallah. Those who will start the following day because of some reason and because it's not yet the date or whatever it may be. I love you three. Subhanallah. <laughs> I love you too. So it's amazing. This... Uh, there are, there are very few scholars who actually would come out and say, look, that other opinion is also okay to follow. And this opinion is also okay. I call on my colleagues, those who know a little bit of the knowledge of Sharia. Don't hold your view and opinion such that you're the only person on earth who has the correct Eid and the correct this and the correct that. No, those are other opinions. They have a valid base. Learn to understand them. You may disagree, but do so respectfully and understand it's fine. I disagree, for example. But I believe it's fine. And another thing is the circumstances in certain countries are very different. You have Europe and countries where it snows sometimes of the year, where it's impossible to see the moon 
at times they are forced to, to either to follow the nearest country which is one way of doing things one might argue well the political countries of today were non non-existent aforetime that's an argument that could be discussed then you have people who will tell you no we've got to follow the closest muslim country that's another opinion which is also you know uh, okay uh, it may not be uh, agreeable to all but it is a juristic opinion that has some form of validity some might say we're going to be following x and y so my brothers and sisters you're never Ever, ever, ever going to get people together on one opinion unless Allah creates some miracle. But at the same time, you need to respect people who started today, those who started tomorrow, who are going to start tomorrow, those who are going to start the following day. The same applies to the Eid. Let's never, ever fight. I hope this is an enlightening video and I really uh, believe that I've tried to simplify it a lot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us and uh, wish you all the best Ramadan once again. Plug in with Allah, clean your heart, remove hatred, malice, jealousy, envy from your heart. Make sure your tongue becomes clean. Your words, you start using the most beautiful words. That's what Ramadan is all about. Use lovely words. Express yourself in the most beautiful way to your loved ones, to, your, to whoever else you interact with. And say the remembrance of Allah. Utter and be involved in, engage in the remembrance of Allah and Allah will open your doors. Read the Quran a lot, connect with it, do your fasting and make sure that you have maximized on this beautiful month of Ramadan. Barakallah feekum everyone. I really make dua for all of you and I pray that you do the same for me. The ummah is bleeding at the moment. There is a lot that we are going through. The last thing we need is to fight about the moon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.